हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू पीपल कोड इवेंट सीरीज बाय पीपल सॉफ्ट चैनल इन टूडेज एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टू डेटा एंट्री इवेंट्स इन पीपल सॉफ्ट व्हिच आर रो इंसर्ट एंड रो डिलीट इन द प्रीवियस एपिसोड वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द फील्ड इवेंट्स व्हिच आर फील्ड डिलीट एंड फील्ड चेंज सो इफ यू वुड लाइक टू चेक द प्रीवियस एपिसोड यू कैन गो टू प्लेलिस्ट सेक्शन ऑफ पीपल सॉफ्ट चैनल and access the playlist for people code events tutorials in today's episode we are going to discuss about row insert and row delete we will understand their behavior when these events are triggered and we will also see some sample code examples so without further delay let us start the discussion row insert people code event is triggered when we click on the plus button on the scroll area that means when we are trying to add a new row of data and we can use this people code event to write the business logic that should be executed when adding a new row of data for example this is the employee component and if we go to the projects tab then we can see that we have projects scroll for this employee since one employee can be tagged to multiple projects now if we click on the plus button here on this scroll area then the associated row insert people code for this scroll will be executed let us test this by writing a simple win message so we can write people code for row insert in record field level and component record level so let us write the people code using component record level so this is the employee component we will go to view people code the associated record is employee project record employee project table so we will select the people code event as row insert and let us write a win message all right let us test the effect of this people code so if we go to the projects page now if we click on the plus button then we can see that the associated row insert people code has been executed and then it will proceed further to add a new row of data now here are some important points to remember with respect to the row insert people code so when we add a new row of data then row insert is not the only people code event which is executed in fact as soon as row insert people code event executes successfully field default gets executed after that field formula gets executed and after that row init people code events get executed for example if we click on the plus button then row insert is executed however let us say we have written some field default people code for projects or project name and some field formula people code for technology in that case all of these people code events will be executed subsequently as we discussed also if we have written people code for row init people code event then that people code will also be executed the second important point is that error and warning message should not be written at a row insert because row insert is followed by these couple of people code events hence it is not a good idea to write error or warning message at the row insert people code event and the third important point is that we can disable insertion of new rows of data we can do that in the application designer as well as using people code so let us see how we can disable new rows of data using application designer now if we want to disable adding new rows of data for this scroll we can double click on this scroll which will open the scroll area properties we can go to use tab and we can click here for no row insert let's save this and let us test the effect of this change so let us open the existing transaction and if we go to projects tab then 
we can no longer see the plus button here because we have disabled adding new rows of data. In that case, the associated row insert people code event will not be executed since we do not have the functionality to add a new row of data. All right, guys, so it's time for a small use case. So we have this use case with three requirements. So first requirement is that on adding a new row of data, a message should be displayed to the user that a manager's approval will be required for the new project. Second requirement is that the project ID field for the new project should be auto populated. For example, for this employee, we already have one project with project ID as P01. Now the requirement is that if we are trying to add a new row of data, then the project ID here should be P02. Similarly, if we try one more row, then the project ID should be P03, etc. And the third requirement is that we have to display the available project hours while adding a new project information for the employee. For example, let's assume that an employee has total nine working hours available per day, per working day. Now, for the first project here, we already have allocated three hours. Hence, the remaining hours are nine minus three, which is six. Now, if we are trying to add a new project for this employee, then the available hours should be six. So that based upon the available hours, we can make a decision about how many hours to de dedicate for this project. So we do have three requirements and as a good practice, we will divide these three people code for the three requirement in three different people code events. So the first requirement to display a message, we will put that in the row insert people code event. The second requirement to auto populate the project ID for the new project, we will write the people code for this requirement in the field default of the project ID. And the third requirement, which is to recalculate the available hours on adding new project, we will add that people code into row init people code event. With this distribution, we will also verify that whenever row insert is triggered, these set of people code events are triggered. So let us write the people code for our requirements. First, let's start with row insert. So this is the employee component. Let's go to view people code. Let us select the project table. Now we already have a win message written. We will just change the content of the win message as per our requirement. So our first requirement is completed. Second requirement is to auto populate the project ID. For that, we will go to the project ID field. So this is the project ID field. And in the field default of project ID, we will write the required people code. So this is the people code for our requirement. And for the third requirement, which is to recalculate available hours on addition of new row of data, for that, we will go to employee project table and we will write a people code in row init event. All right, so we have written people code for all three requirements. Now, let us test the effect of this people code. Let us open an existing transaction. So if we go to the projects tab, we already have one project associated for this employee. Now, if we try to add a new project, then we will receive the message as per our requirement. So the first requirement is completed. If we click on OK, then the second requirement is also completed because the people code has been executed using the field default formula of the project ID. As we discussed, field default is executed as soon as the row insert has been completed successfully. Also, we can see that now we are able to see the available hours, which is six hours, because the first project has consumed three hours and the remaining hours are nine minus three, which is six. So this requirement has also been completed 
because we have written the people code for this requirement in the row init people code event. Now we have added the second project for this employee. Now if we try to add one more project for this employee, then we will receive the message as expected. We are getting the project ID as P03, which is again as expected and the available hours are now four because first project is consuming three hours, second project is consuming two hours. So we have nine minus five, four hours are available. So this is how we can leverage the row insert people code and its associated event for our requirement. Now, one important point here is that we already know that row init people code event is going to trigger after row insert people code event. So we should never write the same people code logic in row insert, which is already there in row init and vice versa. Otherwise, the same people code will be executed twice. So these are the important points which we need to understand for row insert people code event. The next event is row delete event. And as you might have already guessed till now, row delete event is executed when we click on the minus button on a scroll area. That means when we are trying to delete an existing row of data. We can use row delete people code event to write business logic that has to be executed while deleting a row of data and row delete people code event is available at record field level and component record level. This is similar to row insert people code event. For example, if we check this project information of an employee, we have multiple rows of data. Now, if we click on the minus button, then the system will ask for our confirmation whether we have to delete a row of data or not. And if we provide the confirmation, then the particular row will be deleted. However, it is not yet deleted from the people's of records. If we click on the save button, then it will be deleted from the people's of record. However, if we return to the search and if we click on no, then the row will not be deleted. So in order to delete a row completely, we need to save the transaction. Now we can validate the execution of row delete event by writing a simple win message in row delete event of this projects. So this is the employee component. We will go to view people code. We will select the record, which is employee project table. And in the row delete, we will write a win message. All right, let us test the effect of this people code. So let us reopen the same transaction and we have three projects for this employee. So if we delete a row of data, then after providing a confirmation, we are getting the required message. And this confirms that the row delete people code has been triggered and then the row has been removed. Now, one thing to notice is that if we delete all the rows from the data, then at the end and empty row is present in this scroll area. And we can see that the available hours here is nine because obviously we do not have any row of projects available for this employee. So we can use row delete people code event to write validation people code. For example, let us assume a scenario where this is a purchase order and in the header, we are maintaining a total. Now, we are having four items and the total will display the cost of all the four items. Now, if we delete one of the items from this card, then the total value on the header should be updated. So this is how we can use row delete people code event to recalculate values on deletion of existing transactions. One more reason for which we can use people code in row delete is to validate the deletion of, of transaction. For example, let us say that this employee is tagged to three different projects. Now, if we have a requirement that the employee must have at least one project tagged to it, 
otherwise the employee will not be an active employee for the organization in that case we can make use of the row delete event to write people code the functionality will be like if we are deleting the first project then it is fine again the second project can be deleted however when the employee is left with just one project then the deletion should not be allowed all right so if we have this requirement then let us write people code for this requirement using row delete people code event so as we have already written a win message we will write our required people code in the same place so this is the required people code for our use case now let us test the effect of this people code now we can see that this employee has three projects associated so if we delete project number one then it should not be an issue so the project one is removed from the scroll if we delete the second project also this should not be the issue and second project is removed but now we are left with just one project so row delete should not allow us to remove this single project so now if we try to delete this project and if we provide the confirmation then we are getting a message here that at least one project must be allocated to an employee and we can see that the system did not allow us to remove this project so this is how we can use row delete people code event for validation we discuss that in row insert we should not write error or warning message however in the row delete people code event we can definitely write error or warning message because we should have some validation in place if those are not met then we should prevent the user from deleting the transaction this is how we can write the people code for row delete event also similar to row insert we saw that we can disable adding new row of data through application designer we can implement the similar concept for row delete so if we have a requirement that we should disable deleting existing rows of data we can achieve the same functionality so this is the project page we can double click to this project scroll area and here we can select no row delete option so now if we open the project's information we can see that we no longer have this minus button and we cannot delete any row of data so this is how we can use row delete people code event all right guys that's it for today's episode if you found this content helpful, then please like this video. In the next episode, we are going to discuss the save events, which are save edit, save pre-change, workflow, and save post change. So if you are interested in the same, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.